Hey Phylos, uh, hope that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, this is a response to your questions atheist ask video with the five sort of typical questions that atheists tend to ask theists, you know, when they're trying to poke fun or just trying to sort of rile people up. And uh, I, I do appreciate you sort of calmly trying to tackle them. But uh, I do have to respond because there there seems to be uh, still a lot of issues with the answers that you gave from from my perspective at least. So I'll just go down the list and uh, just try to hit a couple of points and hopefully it won't seem too rambly and uh, we'll go from there. So I guess the first one you're talking about uh, the evidence of God. The question specifically is name one evidence of God or for God. And you pretty much just say that there's lots of evidence, but you don't actually say what any of that evidence is, so it's not really very helpful in proving anything, or it's, it's not evidence because you, you're not saying what it is. The one example that you do give, sort of under your breath at the end of the question, is the anthropic principle which actually explains why God is not necessary for the universe to function the way it does and have life come up. So it's kind of shooting yourself in the foot there. But that is your only example so far. So I'm not sure where you were going with that. Um, you also touch on morality and how sort of there wouldn't be no morality without someone giving it to us. And again, you don't explain why you think that or any sort of evidence for that. You just say it as though it's a fact. And it, since it counters hundreds of years of biology and psychology and more recently studies of animal behavioral patterns and stuff like that, I, I'm interested in hearing why you think that is the case and why you... you would disagree with all of this other information that seems to point to the fact that morality is an aspect to life in varying degrees. And so yeah, I don't know where the, the evidence for God is in any of that. It, you really just didn't mention any actual evidence. You're just asserting things so far. So, oh yeah, you bring up the existence of Jesus as well. Uh, but you don't give any reason to think that he actually existed outside of a biblical account, which, again, isn't evidence unless you can prove that the Bible is accurate, which you don't even try to do. And, I mean, it would be kind of silly to try to do in a short video, but you, know, you don't even try to explain why you think that story is true. It's not really good evidence for anything. Uh, question two. Uh, uh, that would be the who created God question. Or, you know, if God created everything, where did God come from? The whole kind of uh, that whole pattern there. And uh, you basically just say that it's flawed, a flawed question, which is true. But your answer of God doesn't need a creator because he created everything, well, that, that's not an answer. Um, you, d you don't explain why you think that might be the case. You give no reason whatsoever to explain why God wouldn't need to be created if everything else needed to be created. A and you basically just don't attempt to answer the question. It's th The question is logically flawed in that it has no real answer, sort of like... Uh, have you stopped beating your wife? You know, it's it's a kind of question that no matter what the answer is, it's probably not the answer that you mean to give because the question is constructed in a way that you'd have to reform the question in order for it to make logical sense. But instead of doing that, you just ignore the whole question and just repeat the same thing that causes people to ask the question in the first place. So it doesn't really help anything. Hey, number three, uh, that's where you're talking about, uh, you know, why is your specific God, in this case Christianity, right? And you, you boil it down pretty much to prophecies. 
and that there there are prophecies from the Old Testament that come true in the New Testament, and et cetera. The problem with that is you don't explain why you think any of that actually happened as opposed to just being a book. I mean, when you have a book that has some prophecies and you have another book that came out after it that has some of those prophecies fulfilled, we tend to call those sequels, not proof of God. So, you know, you have to sort of bring the, the logic down to the base level of showing why those stories might be true before you can use those stories being true as evidence for anything. Number four is, couldn't the disciples have fit Jesus into the prophecies? And you basically say that because it takes hundreds of years to build up a mythos and sort of to fabricate large, uh, large stories like, like would be about Jesus, and that the disciples started writing the Gospels right after the death of Jesus, there just wasn't time for sort of uh, inaccuracy and falsehoods to kind of creep into the stories. Now there, there's two problems with that. The first would be that most historians would disagree with you that the disciples started writing right away and would say that it's much more likely that the Gospels started to be written at around 70 AD or so, so a couple of decades, three or four decades, after Jesus had died, would be the first gospel, and then they kind of go up from there for a couple hundred years. Uh, there are people that would say that they were all done by 70 AD, but even that is decades after the fact. But even ignoring that completely and saying that they were done and spread around the gospels, within days of Jesus' death even, it wouldn't help your case at all because it doesn't take any amount of time for a, a rumor to spread and become embellished and twisted and accepted by large groups of people as the truth. I mean, you, you see it all the time. Even, uh, you know, looking up stories about Elvis's childhood, you'll get conflicting stories about the same time period or the same people and I mean, there are still people that are alive today that have met Elvis personally. That's not exactly ancient history. And even that is an extreme. I mean, go to any high school and ask any student there how long it would take for a rumor to spread and become sort of standard known knowledge. And they would probably tell you, you know, within an hour or two. And that's just one building. I mean, it would not take any time at all to embellish stories and spread them as the truth uh, through gospel. And in fact, the gospels would help spread those rumors and embellishments. So we really don't know where you're going with that at all. Number five is, do you really believe in hell? And really the only response I have to, to your answer to that question is that you're, you're going back to the Bible again with no external references, no reason to think that stories of damnation in the Bible are true. Uh, so yeah, so I don't know. It's just back to the Bible, and again, that's not evidence for anything, so it doesn't help. And number six, can atheists find God? Ignoring the obvious philosophical issue of as soon as an atheist finds God, they're not an atheist anymore, so philosophically, one could be really strange and argue that atheists couldn't find God because the second that they did, they wouldn't be atheists, but that's just silliness. Um, basically your, your answer seems to boil down to you have to sort of open your heart and believe in God and accept God before you can find evidence or believe in God and that that's nonsense that's not how evidence works that's not how finding out the truth works the only thing that works like that is faith and it's just not a very good standard for why you would believe something. So, no. And uh, I guess that's all of the questions. Uh, I don't know, hopefully I hit all the points. Oh, there was one more. Uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. So I guess that's it. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you'll have any response to this or even if you'll see it. 
But anyway, though, just thought I would uh, toss that out there. See you later.